Hello and welcome back to the Queensbury Lines. Now if you haven't seen the rest of the series, go back and check those videos out because we've already done three videos from Queensbury Station to our present location today. Now we're continuing our explore all the way through to Keithley and we're just leaving the Thornton Station site which is just behind me over here. But before we leave, let's just have one quick look on this side of the fence. So you can see there at the back the old access ramp down from Thornton Road and right in front of us there would have been the two platforms and the, platform, and the ticket building and you can see where the old bridge was on the abutment there that would have spanned the tracks and down to the track level. Now just over there you can just see what remains or what looks like the remains of a platform edge in the school playground over there and not much remaining on this side here so the line would have left the station and headed out and joined the trap bed just here and headed off so let's continue further on and one final look there at the Thornton viaduct as we leave on this beautiful summer's day gracefully spanning the valley there and just beyond the school or the Thornton station site just found this sleeper in the edge obviously significant to the line. So we're heading up the track bed just alongside Thornton Road which is just up here and the first spot we would come to on this section would be a bridge, an overpass for a, a track or a lane or a stream of some sort to go underneath the uh, railway and we found it, it's right here. So there you go, still intact. You've got the walls on this side and the same on the other side so I've made my way down from the track bed and you can clearly see there the embankment as it still survives today all the way this way now the bridge is just down here as you can see so let's make our way down and here we go one intact bridge again and today it's just a footpath which is what I've just walked down from this housing estate here and you can head on through and continue up there through the fields and just look at that, still intact on this side but there's a section beyond here that's confusing me because it looks like there was another abutment or there is, yeah there's two abutments here it looks like there was another bridge here and if I just show you up there and zoom in for you you can see that there's steel girders still there look so that to me has been cut off across there. So yeah, there would have been another bridge here side by side. So I'm wondering if there was two tracks here and it's split somewhere. It does look to be on two different levels. This one here is higher than the one just down there, as you can see. So I'm wondering if there was a the line bypassing the station was on a higher level than the station line itself for some reason and they joined a bit further up and they basically were carrying them separately across this uh, ravine here or this footpath one final look from the other side so yeah this one is totally intact here well yeah what a strange bridge that is but anyway let's push on because there is a footbridge just a bit further up here I'm not sure if there's going to be anything to see of that, but we'll try anyway. So it appears we've been thwarted on this section here because it currently turns into that and it's fenced off. So the line would have continued straight on there and we now have to make a detour up here. So what I'll do is probably join you at the crossing where it crossed underneath Thornton Road, just further up here. So here we are on Thornton Road and you can see where the line would have headed towards us straight ahead there under a bridge here and you can still see a brick wall there but I don't think that that's an original wall it looks like a dry stone wall today same as this side here and you can clearly see here where the cutting is where the line would have headed through and towards the first tunnel on the line which is Wellhead's tunnel directly through there so in a second we'll head a bit closer and see what we can do about the tunnel here just a point worth noting that this bridge here must have been a very deep bridge because that cutting is at least 100 feet down there to the uh, track bed anyway 
So it must have been very deep down here. So we've reached the cutting just after Thornton Road where the line would have headed from straight in front of the camera there and down here towards the Wellheads Tunnel which you can still see the portal of just down there so I'll zoom in for you but yet again there is no way I'm going to make it down there it's at least 100 feet down there and very very steep and I'm told there's not much to see anyway down there because the entrance is completely blocked up so now let's cut to two years ago when we went looking for the other side of the Wellheads Tunnel to try get inside. And it features two very well-known YouTubers called uh, the Whitewicks. You might have heard of them, Paul and Rebecca Whitewick. And we did this section two years ago, all the way from here, right through to Wilsdon. So what you're gonna see across the next few videos is various clips of me with Paul and Rebecca Whitewick doing these sections because we did a lot of the tunnels coming up. And you're also going to see me in the present day filling in the gaps that I didn't film the first time round. So anyway, let's venture the other side of Wellhead's Tunnel and our search for the other portal and the sticky mess that I got into. So here we are on the north side of the Wellhead's Tunnel portal. Now, we did hear a rumour that this had been filled in many years ago and also that it actually collapsed due to its own weight so it was actually filled in afterwards. But nonetheless, we decided to head through that deep undergrowth there and try and find this portal to see if the rumour was true and whether it existed or not. Now, we may live to regret that, as you will see coming up. So here I am with Paul Whitewake heading through the deep undergrowth. Now, Rebecca, rightfully so, decided to stay at the top and wait for us. Yeah. What a great decision that was. A bit like Raiders of the Lost Ark through here. Lots of obstacles, lots of horrible trees pricking us in the face. In fact, we had quite a few injuries this day. Paul sustained an injury to his eye from a flicking branch. And I, as you will see, got absolutely covered and nearly swallowed in mud. So we think we're making hasty time here, heading through the trees and walking around the edges to avoid the bits of mud that we can see right in the middle and also the dense overgrowth. I don't think we're anywhere near it. <laughs> and then we make it to this section here and as you can see a lovely grassy meadow right in front of us or so we thought. So we headed out into the centre of it thinking we could make our way towards the portal on this nice level ground but as you can see Paul is a bit shocked at what he's standing on because it seems to be moving so I make the step straight behind him and as we stand here my foot starts to sink and then the second one so I take another step forward and sink even further it's getting worse now I'm starting to panic Whoa. Oh my god. Yeah, right. Yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe don't go that way. As my foot goes right down up to my thigh and I can feel that my legs can't move. So Paul pulls me out. Now this is where the panic set in. I was absolutely terrified. I hate the thought of sinking into something and I can't get out. And it also absolutely stank. So at this point we decided maybe we should abandon this. It's not worth it just to find a filled in portal really. We knew we weren't going to get in the tunnel. So at this point we were looking for a way back out without going back <laughs> through all the overgrowth that we'd just come through and decided that we were going to clamber up the steep banking at the sides instead and then head back out to safety and walk down the side of the cutting instead. But it proved a bit more trickier than we thought even to get out of there, as you will see. So here we are plotting our escape route. Now do we go up the steep banking or do we continue straight on and back the way we came? Up the steep banking we go and it was a lot steeper than it appears on this video. And trying to hold a camera, a heavy camera bag and also clamber up this hill. And I will say clamber because I nearly fell down a few times. 
grabbing onto any kind of weed that I can just to get out and get up that banking. So we finally made it up the banking and you can see the relief on our faces Jesus. as we were contemplating why the hell we even God. bothered to do that in the first place. Now this section, it emerges from the wellhead's tunnel and then it heads over a nice little bridge over a stream in this little cut in here, which is a natural valley running through. And then it heads towards the Denholm tunnel where it goes back inside again. Now it's worth mentioning that the wellhead's tunnel is 662 yards long. The Denholm tunnel, which is the next one, is only 150 yards long. Yeah. I can wash my wellies now. Here's the lovely little bridge with the stream running through it. But it's not actually a bridge, it's more of a culvert, as you'll see. So we're going to put the camera inside very shortly. But you can also see on top of this little bridge is another bridge where the track actually crosses the valley and a farmer's track runs through it and the culvert underneath it, which is very unusual. I've never seen a double bridge before. But not much to see inside apart from some beautiful stonework and the silted up stream that runs through from one side to the other. We didn't attempt to go in because it was far too low of a ceiling and we were already traumatised from the earlier attempt to get through the wellhead's tunnel. I you were just in, maybe. So here we are at the portal for the Denholm tunnel. And as luck would have it, the door is wide open, as you can see. We decided to actually go in this one. First thing you can see, it was very misty when we shone the torch down. And you can see the haze coming through as well. But you can just see some light at the end of the tunnel, which is the other door on the far side. So here we are inside. The tunnel is in very good condition. I was actually quite surprised at how good condition it was. Like I said, this one's only a short one at 150 yards. Quite a few refuges in this one as well, on both sides of the tracks. And as you can see, we're already approaching the far side and the door that's open. Now we're hoping at this point we can get through that door and straight into the Denholm station site. I say hoping, you'll see why in a minute. But as we get towards the door, we notice that the ground goes from nice and walkable to a bit more slushy and then a bit more swampy, bringing back horrible nightmares from what we just endured behind us at the Wellheads Tunnel. And I started to panic yet again. <laughs> Only I didn't need to because it wasn't actually that deep, nor was it that bad. But we had to be careful because we didn't know if there were any culverts or drainage systems underneath our feet and where we might step into them. So we had to be really cautious when we're stepping forward and testing everything a step ahead. Now we just start to plan our route across the mud to get to this door so we can hopefully get out the other side and not have to endure the journey back through the tunnel. It took us a good 20 minutes, I'd say, just to get through this mud to the door. There's a few rocks in there. And here we are on the other side. And as you can see, not easily accessible and definitely not going that way out of the tunnel swamp again a big big swamp but this time a lot more overgrown than the other one and after the experience i just had i wasn't going to risk anything to go through that because he couldn't even see the floor and not to mention that the actual weeds were up to my shoulders at some points so we decided the easiest option is back through the tunnel so again, navigating this horrible swamp at the portal, hopefully reaching dry land quickly, then we can get out the tunnel and then make our way round the other side in the car instead. Just as we were exiting the tunnel, we spotted this refuge here with a bit of damage yeah. inside. A few of the bricks had fallen out and a bit of a movement behind it, shall we say. But other than that, the tunnel is in very good condition. And one last look at the portal that's now bricked up with an open door, just as Paul exits and we head back out into the nice, warm summer's day. What a relief. Anyway, it's now time to go jump in the car and head around to the old Denholm station site. And this is the Denholm station site today. Now back when me and Paul visited, these houses weren't here and we actually walked on the site of the station and it was nothing more than an old piece of concrete. But as you can see today, it's a brand new building site. New houses popped up and you can just see the portal of the next tunnel just behind those houses there in the cutting. But this beautiful reservoir right next to them as well. 
So unfortunately, absolutely nothing to show you of the Denholm station site. That's why I sent the drone up, just to give you an overhead shot. But in regards to the actual site, the station building was right in the centre there, with the lines running straight through from tunnel to the next tunnel, which is known as the Doe Park Tunnel. And then the goods shed would have been on the back left corner. Now it's believed that the goods shed actually was still standing until 2012 when it was destroyed by a large fire. You can also see here the former road running down from Denholm and into the station site. So this would have been the original access road. And again, aptly named Station Lane or Station Road. Now we didn't even attempt to go in the Doe Park Tunnel from this side. Especially not today, as like I said, it's now a working building site. So what we did was we just jumped in the car again and headed right around the other side to see if we could get back in that way. But that will be for the next video. So you'll get to see us on the other side of this tunnel here. And we do get inside and we head back towards the station and then back through the tunnel. But finally, while we're here, again, it's just worth a nice panoramic shot just so you can see what the topography is like around here and why they called this the Alpine route. And the beautiful reservoir. And I'm right above the Denholm station site now. And now we're looking back towards the tunnels and towards Queensbury. But you just get an idea of how rural it is here and also how hilly and how many tunnels and viaducts they had to build. But there in the distance you can see the Hewenden Viaduct which will be coming up later on in this series. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you in the next part.